we've been talking about meditation and how that has to be a part of our lives. And of course, it raises the question of the medical input and the medical impact of meditation. Why don't you start, tell me a little bit about what it means physiologically and medically for somebody to meditate. Well, it's ironic. I love sharing the stage with Suzanne because we have a joke in OBGYN that we know the function of the heart. It's to pump blood to the ovaries and uterus. So I love sitting next to a cardiologist. But and what we say is that there's more to a woman than her ovaries, ovaries and, uterus. and her breast. Yeah. Exactly. But I, I think that from the medical standpoint, the physiology, the medical science is pretty clear. And we know today that, that the stress hormones, which start either in the adrenal glands or the brain, do a whole bunch of bad things. The cortisol, us. right? Uh, dopamine, uh -huh. cortisol, norepinephrine, epinephrine. And so the stress and the waves that Bob was talking about and that Pat and Ariana were talking about, and we, everyone in this room knows, does bad things to us from the head down. And I, I don't think that we can be in a room with this many women with this level of a nationally renowned cardiologist without acknowledging that heart disease is the number one killer of women. Do women manifest stress differently, like Ariana was saying, from a medical standpoint and a hormonal standpoint? Absolutely. And with one in three women dying of heart disease, we need to take this seriously. And as a woman's health specialist that treats the whole woman, not just the ovaries and the uterus, that has to start from the head and the heart. So, so let's move along to the heart then, because I thought what was really interesting is that if you go to the American Heart Association's website, they actually have something you can click on, a whole department there about meditation and heart health. I thought that was pretty significant. So this is amazing. Since 2013, the American Heart Association put out a scientific statement that said transcendental meditation is the only proven form of meditation to reduce blood pressure. And as a doctor, as a clinician, transcendental meditation is the only thing that is prescribable for stress reduction. One of the things that I talk about often is the risk factors. We know the general basic Deal. Blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking, diabetes, obesity, family history. But that piece of stress we know recently has a huge impact on women's hearts, more so than men. We know how to give medication, we know how to tell people to exercise, we know how to tell people to diet, but until 2013, we never could exactly tell people how to manage their stress. And it's an important, hugely important part of, of dealing with women's hearts. The one point that I want to make, since 1986, more women died of heart disease than men. Guess what happened in 1986? That's when more women entered the workforce. That's when women entered the workforce just as much as men. So when we look at the lifestyle issues, when we talk about does stress really have an impact, clearly, we got to talk about the juggling act. We have to talk about the leaning in, the leaning out, and, right, all, right. and all of that, because it makes a difference. And now we have something to say, here's what we can give you. Here's a tool that you can have that can help reduce, reduce the stress. And you're seeing a difference with your patients? Absolutely. I can have someone walk into my office who all of a sudden their sugars are up, they gained weight, and, and I'll say, what's going on? What's happening? Really? And the answer is, you know what? I've been under so much stress. Right. And what do I say? I can very easily write another prescription. I can very easily say, oh, shame on you, you're eating too many cookies. Or I can actually really address the issue, which is coming down to stress. And many people will admit, this is the problem. But what do I do about it? What is the solution? And the interesting thing about TM is that it's not that mindfulness, it's not the, just the one-off. When you actually learn how to meditate properly, when you actually do TM, it affects the arteries, they dilate, it affects the cortisol, the epinephrine. All of these things decrease, the heart slows down. The whole system just relaxes, not just while you're doing it, but throughout the day. We were talking about the whole body, and we were talking about treating the whole body, but let's get back to the ovaries and the uterus, as you were talking about. <laughs> Favorite mecca, areas around here. Right, exactly. Um, 
I actually read something and the, the uh, title of the article was Meditation, Menopause, and Fiber. I thought it was an unusual title, <laughs> but... It all comes out in the end. So to speak. <laughs> We practiced that before. No, no, we didn't. Yeah. Um, what is the relationship, or is there a relationship between meditation and menopause? We can remove the fiber from this, from this piece. Well, thank goodness. That's another specialty. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think there is a connection. I think we don't have to just stop at menopause, though. We can go way back to adolescence, puberty. Half of my practice are girls and women under the age of 21, and I see extreme PMS, PMDD, inability to cope with hormonal changes of their menstrual cycle. And as a doctor, I deal with it one way. As a woman, I think to myself, oh wow, if this is what you're going through at 15, let me tell you, it doesn't get easier. That's and right. then you can take that, your question, starting from menopause, carry it to the reproductive years. Fertility has a clear association with stress. When women are trying to conceive and yeah. they're having difficulty, one of the first things I'll do, in addition to checking off the standard of boxes that we need to do medically, is say, have you considered meditation? Have you considered acupuncture? There's excellent data on that and improving fertility. And then when you get up to menopause, how many women roll into their doctor's office and say, I cannot live another day like this. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a prescription. What we really want to do, as Suzanne was saying, is say, start from the head down. I have no problem writing a prescription if God that's bless. necessary. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm but just saying. I would say medically, the, the analogy here is think of, <laughs> I mean, I'd do it. Think of the emergency room and then think of everything else you're doing as a wellness paradigm. If you need the emergency room, go to the emergency room, figuratively or literally. But if you don't, start by reducing that stress with something that, I do write it on a prescription because sometimes I feel like we have such a society and a culture that unless a doctor right. gets out that pad, people don't take it seriously. So as I write down seven to nine hours of sleep, Ariana, see, uh, with every patient, as I write down, you must move your body every day, not three times a week, every day, I write that down. And then I write, and you need to meditate. We're very conditioned now to focusing on physical fitness. And that was, by the way, how I got to TM, I thought, God, I've got this down. I, I, I lift weights, I do my cardio. I'm from the neck down, I'm completely healthy. It was from the neck up that I really needed help and it was doctor heal, heal thyself and that's what led me to TM. And I think we need to remember that there's a head attached to the body. Dr. Suzanne Steinbaum, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thank you so much. Thank you.